So my name is Magda Szeniawska, uh, and I was invited by Tomek to tell about uh, my experiences in the outdoors, um, wilderness therapy or processes that I uh, that I run and lead outdoors. Uh, so to, today I will share my experiences with you. So, uh, so. Uh, my background for many years, for uh, I'm uh, connected to uh, NGOs and nonprofit in Poland for almost 20 years now, and I started working with as a youth worker. Uh, we established our own organization, and for many years I was uh, involved with the youth work and family work uh, in Warsaw, in the biggest city in Poland, uh, and. Um, it's too bad that when I when we when you started your presentation, I thought I should have included uh, some photos from there because for many years I was really interested in uh, being in the uh, in the city and I was a street worker. Uh, and uh, around uh, five or six years ago, I also started to include more and more the the outdoors in my work. Uh, so I kind of made this transition. Uh, and today I will tell you the experiences of my work and uh, uh, starting from the right with Mirz Wysoko. This is the uh, association that I was um, engaged with for, for many years. Uh, I, I, I was also establishing it. Um, then with Bank Żywności uh, and uh, Centrum Innovacji Edukacji, that was another project for that I was uh, participating for two years. Uh, and the biggest one, the biggest uh, logo is of Polish Preppers Network Foundation. Uh, it's the organization which I'm cooperating right now. So I will try to summarize my uh, different um, uh, different experience, uh, experiences from those different setups that we tried uh, along those years. Um, and I was working with groups of different ages, as I told you, uh, also at doing some trainings for the uh, for teachers, for youth workers, for outdoors educators. Uh, so also passing the, the experience. Uh, but I was glad to hear uh, from you that uh, some of you um, that uh, your outdoors work is rooted into your background and into your um, personal story, because this is what happened actually with me, that, um, as I mentioned, I was first a youth worker and a trainer indoors and the city worker, <laughs> let's say. And uh, when I started to, um, when I first learned about wilderness therapy, I realized that my personal experience is something, um, my um, qualifications that I even didn't know I had. Uh, I also grew up on the countryside um, in a small village, and um, lots of the time of my free time and my hobbies was around being outdoors, kayaking, ex uh, exploring nature with my uh, children, um, cycling, um, camping in the woods. Uh, and uh, I, re I remember this uh, thought from my first uh, wilderness therapy training that I said, Oh, so this is what I was doing for most of my uh, most of my life. Yes, and this is my uh, my kind of personal growth that I often was going out to the nature and I was using the resource it offered me. Uh, and I'm like, okay, so so this is how it's called, uh, and I really have fallen in love with the uh, with this method. Um, I remember this. Um, Catastrophe of coming from my first training when I came back in front, sat in front of my computer uh, in the office, and I literally cried to my friend and saying, "Oh, I want, to, I want to do something else. I don't want to sit in front of the computer. Uh, I'm still sitting in front of the computer from time to time, uh, uh, some of the time, but I am very happy that more and more of my." Uh, my work there is not only my free time uh, I'm spending outdoors. Uh, and uh, last year and this year as well, I started my um, season for the outdoors uh, when it was still frost and snow. Uh, and uh, last year I finished with frost and this year I haven't finished yet the outdoors 
um, season. Uh, so we, uh, we are still active. Oh, yeah, it's going backwards. All right. Uh, so I thought that uh, I hope uh, later for questions from you, insights, and for some discussion. But I thought that first of all, I will share with you the different settings I worked with, so you can we can relate to that, and I can. Um, because there are lots of, uh, as you know, because uh, I, I hear from all, all of you that it's not a new topic for you, uh, working outdoors and uh, using the, the nature uh, in your work with groups. Uh, so there are lots of different names, uh, names of how we call this work we are doing. Uh, so I thought I would just more or less precisely will tell you what groups I worked with and what kind of setups, and then we can refer to it. And maybe if you have more questions, I can deepen one or the other topic. Um, so starting chrono chronologically, English word, in the history based. Uh, so first of all, it was the wilderness therapy. Uh, we, uh, in our association, Mirz Vysoko, aim high in English, um, we led uh, groups um, of teenagers, and that was younger teenagers, uh, 13 to 19, for one week trekking uh, in small groups, six to 12 uh, participants, uh, doing um, kind of deep work because it was connected to therapy. Well, maybe it, it was, they were young groups to perform the full um, deep therapy, but uh, we, we were um, inviting them to this therapeutic process. Um, and um, always I will give you the uh, heads up for what are the pluses and, and downsides of each of the, of the methods I used. Um, so, uh, the plus side for me, uh, we used a lot of different metaphors and uh, methods used by wild wilderness therapy. I learned it from uh, Wilderness Foundation from England. Uh, they are rooted in the um, in metaphors and um, what we see around really using the resource of the forest, of the um, uh, of art. Uh, you can say tribal arts and going back to our um to the um, human history of when we were expressing ourselves and going deeper into our um inner states through the through the metaphors and through what we see in the world in the nature um What's interesting, and if anybody would be interested afterwards, uh, we not only performed the um, pro, uh, project of taking the groups into the forest, but, the, but in the coordination, uh, in the um, cooperation with the university from Czech Republic, we performed the uh, evaluation of the impact of our method on the participants. So we have uh, the report, uh, we have two reports, in fact, one practical report for how to prepare the um, the training in this uh, through uh, with this method, and the other one is the summary of the study that we performed during the project. It's still available online. Um, and what is uh, and uh, the plus side is also it's a trekking, um, and uh, we took our groups to the mountains. Um, in Slovenia, you will have even <laughs> less, less problems with that. In Poland, the downside, the, the plus side, it's a great metaphor uh, in itself, reaching to the top of the mountain. Uh, probably I don't have to <laughs> explain you much, but if you take the group and explain them that we are often groups that never had the outdoor experience, that we will be going to the mountains and we will reach to the tops. And even though the uh, the method was not on the, um, we didn't stress the long distances, and it was not about the um, sport performance or the trekking performance. It was about the um, overcoming the inner boundaries. Yes, uh, whatever it is, uh, fears or um, physical um, uh, problems, because we really were taking youth that was not active at all. We had one. 
for example, one of the teenagers, he, on each circle, he was uh, sharing that uh, the furthest uh, he he walks usually it's to the other side of the street to Żabka, to our discount uh, small um, corner store. Uh, the cheap one, and that's where he goes to get his fries and uh, pizza, and that's all he does. Uh, and then he was walking with us and, and reaching the, the mountains. So this is a this is a strong um, strong metaphor that is easy to you know to to share with the group and to picture them, the process of inviting them in. Uh, the, and uh, from the downsides of the uh, of this project and this method was that it's very complex. Uh, and for this group, um, age group, uh, it's not always, you know, uh, well fit, uh, in my opinion, the, the, the deep work that we were, were inviting them to. Uh, and for Polish conditions, uh, Tomek will know best, it's difficult to take the groups out to, um, outdoors because uh, we have very difficult, lots of difficulties in uh, getting the permi legal permissions to uh, camp in the national forests, uh, but on the other side, to find um, wide enough spaces that we are by ourselves in nature. So, in fact, uh, uh, it was very difficult to both perform the, the project and actually go back to this method and still taking groups to the mountains, Polish mountains, uh, they are they're crowded and more difficult to, to have the organized groups. We were doing uh, doing the project with the Czech Republic and it was much easier on their side. On our side, it was complex and difficult from the, from the legal side. Uh, and surprisingly or not, uh, because in Poland, we think that the Polish mountains are the wild uh, part of the country. Uh, but I moved north, I moved from Warsaw to, to, uh, to the north of Poland. Uh, and that, that's much better place, even though we don't have mountains, so we don't have this beautiful metaphor, uh, but it's much better place, well, um, better fit to actually uh, perform the, the work that we are doing. Um, and I think it's one of the lessons to be learned that uh, it, it's, not all, it's not all about the outside conditions. It's a lot about the process and what you offer the group. That's my perspective. Yeah. So um, even if it's maybe not a perfect, not perfect metaphor, but if you have a good place, the space where you can invite the group to and uh, do it in the um, easier way for trainers, then you have way more space to offer uh, the, the process work to the group. Um, the next uh, setup um, uh, of the outdoor, my outdoor work, uh, maybe I didn't tell you the, the background, but maybe it was uh, obvious for, for me or not. Like my background is for the for the work I do in the outdoors. It's uh, focused on the personal development. That was my focus before as a trainer. I did some um, tutoring course, coaching as well. So, so this is my scope and my interest the most. Yeah, uh, just to to go back, uh, maybe you, you already learned that. Uh, so next was a farm uh, farm project. It's called uh, From Outdoors to Labor Market. It was a cooper European cooperation of I think five or six uh, organizations. Again, we learned uh, a method. Uh, this time from Scotland. Uh, it was called Edinburgh Method, uh, but I added here Polish style. And why I added Polish style? Because um, when we were learning from, um, from the Sc Scottish partner, uh, it turned out that their uh, training is uh, way more focused on the practical skills on practical skills on um really talking about the labor market um putting together the curriculum it was of course it was getting the needs group the young adults uh, into the labor market so their their method was really focused on on those steps uh our polish style uh, went much deeper and uh, the design of the, our group um, 
was uh, going in way more into the inner motivation that was the basis of what we of the um, program that we designed i will tell you a little bit more about it in a second uh, but just the general setup so the groups were uh, also bigger sometimes they were five people but it was uh, because of the covid uh, situation mostly it was 10 15 um, age group uh, 18 to 30 as the needs uh, uh, it says seven days in the forest um, with the um, process of the individual and um, group coaching three months afterwards so with the way more support for the for the participants um, and uh, included uh, a big um, coaching uh, part because each of the participants also during the uh, the forest training they had one to one so the, the coaching start was starting already in the forest and um, lasted with a different coaches but lasted three months later i see i have some spelling mistakes i'm really sorry i'm not very good with spelling not only in english and today i was uh, and uh, I was fighting when I was putting together uh, the final version of the presentation. I couldn't change the, the language version. Somehow it only wanted to correct me in Polish. So um, sorry for that. Uh, uh, didn't want, the PowerPoint didn't want it to help me. Um, so that was for the, for the phone project. Um, and those groups you were taking already here in Varmia region. Uh, in the uh, north of Poland, um, and uh, I loved this, pro this project, and I think it was a very well fit program, uh, uh, fit to the needs of the needs <laughs> that we were taking. Uh, and as you can see, there are lots of pluses that I mentioned, and it's, of course, it's only uh, a couple that I decided to mention. Uh, so the design was really, as I said, it was really um the, we could cover the whole group process and the sessions that we uh, the topics that we want were supposed to cover from one day to another it really resembled the process that i saw the young people were going through um and we were we could address different topics that were actually uh, shown in the group and address them with the with, with, with the trainers uh, approach uh, and it was the age group is, I think it's a great uh, age group to work with, uh, and that can really help needs also in many different situations, uh, but it's, uh, I, I, I really think it's a good method. Uh, the length, the stay, the seven day, you know, it's uh, this classic uh, length of the training that can, uh, that uh, you can really cover the whole group process and close it, start it and close it, uh, very nice design. Uh, and that it was based on their motivation. And I, uh, as I was a, also the trainer that was doing the online training later for them, I could really see uh, that how much motivation they gained for to change their uh, living situation through this experience, um, uh, through this uh, forest experience. Uh, and uh, I wrote this one uh, sentence, how happy I am uh, in this comfort, because for the needs we worked with, for a lot of them, the comfort that they have on the daily basis in their lives, the comfort of uh, even being supported by parents, uh, people in their 30s still living with their parents, uh, not being able to find a stable job, or just living in the city and hanging out with their friends, they were discovering how happy they are um, being outdoors. Um, Often, uh, as you can see at this, this tent, uh, there is a wind blowing over the tent. It's not a coincidence, a, a small picture, because lots of groups were taken uh, early spring or late uh, fall, and they were coming for the first time outdoors, first time sleeping in the tent for a week already, in let's say October, when we have already frost, um, or at first, sometimes there's first snow in Poland. And they were discovering how the coming out of the, the com their comfort zone gives, how much pleasure it gives them. Uh, and it was really giving them the motivation to think about reaching their life. Uh, the 
minus uh, was one campsite. I like the, because we were usually in, just camping in one place or at, uh, ch uh, changing the location only once, uh, which uh, has, it gives us lots of time because time is a very precious thing if you are leading the whole process outdoors for some days. If some of you have done it, it's maybe you have the same experience uh, that um, all the work around leading the process and the group and the training outdoors it take consumes a lot of time. It's it's a, uh, so the time that we can spend actually on activities on the um, exercise group exercises it's much uh, smaller. So so you have when you design the the process you need to think about it. So uh, one location gives us more time. To put on, uh, into the um, into the exercises, the design for the for the group, but uh, gives us less of this um, metaphor of the road of the path, um, which I really liked, and I think it was useful for the participants. So some pictures from, um, from those activities, our needs. Um, Okay, so um, the foundation that I mentioned that I work with right now, Polish Preppers Network, uh, it's also based here in the north of Poland. Uh, and I call it, you know, coming from the Edinburgh method, Polish style, I would say we turned it into, uh, into Warmia style. This is our name of our region, Warmia. Um, so, uh, this year, uh, we conducted four-day uh, camps or four-day expeditions um, open to the, uh, one of you mentioned the working of the rural uh, communities. So our expeditions were also targeted for our rural um, community uh, in, our, um, in our region. Um, so it could be adults, teenagers, families, um and those uh and those groups we were taking already to the island uh, which is our location for our foundation we have we are very happy and we are very lucky to get this site uh to for our needs um so we have the island small island on the lake uh, that is uh covered with, with trees with the forest but it's uh, not publicly owned, so we don't we can overcome the the legal problems that I mentioned to you before that we are struggling in Poland with to take groups into the woods, uh, and we can actually build their stuff so we can have uh, we can develop our own camping site. Uh, and uh, so we can engage our participants into practical. Um, into practical uh, activities, and they can see the results of the of of their of the work of their own hands, which is also very very interesting. Uh, and one of my biggest learnings in this um, with this year with those four days um, expeditions was to have the um, group that was not uh, focused on by age, or uh, it was not um, targeted for families. Uh, it was a wide variety of uh, participants, mm, and uh, and it was in, uh, first. I thought it as a big challenge, and in a, in a way, it was a challenge to have such a big variety of participants uh, from coming from different um, with different needs. But it's a um, big added value. Mm, so I will. Um, of, and I will then, I will um, develop it later. Uh, why I think it's such a big value for the for the groups to actually mix um, seniors with families of with small children, with some teenagers without parents, or with some parents with teenagers, which I thought will be the biggest uh, our biggest struggle. And uh, I think I, th I thought it's, it might be impossible to take teenagers on the same, uh, gathered teenagers on the same expedition with their parents. And it, it turned out it's a very, it was a very good process for, for both uh, both sides. Um, 
So from this setup, what I like is that we really, uh, it's a process-based work. So we work way less on the, on the scenario, way more on the, um, on the group process, on what are the needs actually of this actual group that we are taking with us and trying to design the most kind of natural process for them. Yeah. So if they are, um, groups, uh, if we gather a group and there are a bit more uh, families with smaller children. Uh, so maybe that's a, it's good to include, first, of course, act, some activities to play with children, but uh, for example, to help them with the sensory development, um, encourage them to go bare feet uh, in the woods. Uh, we started to do, create the sensoric path with them. Uh, yeah, and some um, Nature watching. If we have if we have uh, parents with teenagers, it turns out that our expedition is more about the parental skills and advice. Uh, and we have among our trainers, uh, we have trainers for the parental uh, skills. So we are talking about a kind of empowering teenagers to become stronger and to become less dependent on their parents and the parents to. Uh, which is the biggest, uh, bigger challenge to let, uh, to help the parents to let go children to grow and to be more, um, independent because that's, that's the struggle. The teenagers know what they are doing. Uh, and the part for the parents, it's really difficult to let go. Um, and, uh, because uh, as I said, we have now uh, at this, this island, we have one site and we actually engage the participants to build up the site with us. Um, it's, it's a real engagement. Yeah, so that's the second plus uh, I men I'm mentioning here. And I can tell you, I was really surprised uh, how we had the summary of the our project, the, our finals in the project. And it was... Uh, I have to tell you, it was it was not a good final, uh, not a um, good place for to bring together all the participants. Uh, not interesting spot, and I was uh, bad weather, and I thought we will have really low turnout at our meeting, our final meeting for the project. Um, and I was shocked because I think around eighty percent of our participants through the whole year, it was over 100 people, 150 people, uh, they showed up and they showed up with their families and they showed up with, uh, with uh, some of their friends. Uh, and it showed me how, how what a good job we've done. And uh, for me, it's the sign of the real engagement of from our side and from their side. So they actually, uh, that we are uh, letting them build something real for real makes the real connection uh, and the real engagement. Um, yes, and as I said, the, the mixed group, uh, which I thought it was a big challenge at the beginning, uh, was uh, one of the strongest uh, parts of this of this project. Um, my uh, downsides, uh, too short, <laughs> four days, that was you know, the, that was the project set up, uh, but it's too short, of course, uh, for the uh, um, day long process. But on the other hand, it's more available for people working on the daily basis, for students to come, uh, for, for children to come. Um, and with such a mixed group, it's difficult to plan ahead. So... Uh, as a, I am a planner. <laughs> uh, I like to re think through the things way ahead and have the good plan A and B. Um, this is what I'm actually learning from uh, the flexibility is what I'm learning from the outdoors. Uh, so it is a challenge to with such a such a process based work and such a mixed group to to plan ahead. Um, those are the pictures from our island. Uh, so the picture from inside the island and this the, the, the trees that you see in the middle of the, of the, of the picture. This is the island. Uh, some meadows and mostly uh, woods. Um, and uh, right now we are actually, I didn't mention it here, but uh, it was because we just started it, but we have a very interesting project with one of the primary schools now, uh, that we are um, taking all the grades from one to four and uh, 
um, our trainers are performing for them the um, integration training, one day uh, workshop inside the school. Second day for each class, it's a one day, it's a, in school. And so it's indoors, but talking about outdoors. Second day, it's half in the school, half in the park where they are practicing some outdoor skills. And the third day, it's coming to our island for a one day trip. Uh, they are taking their parents with them uh, and showing them what they learned through those uh, first two days. Um, uh, we just started this design, but uh, we are very, very happy with it. Uh, it's a challenging moment because we all, as we mentioned at the beginning of our meeting, we have the snow already in Poland. Uh, so it is a challenge for children. It is a challenge for parents because they are a bit afraid of um, of colds, coughs and uh, all that. But uh, bringing this topic into the school and actually covering the, all, the, all the classes, all the groups, uh, and they have... Um, and with this age group, they have 12 uh, classes in the, in the school that we are working with. Uh, it gives a big power to the whole school community. And um, and the teachers, uh, they are uh, sometimes they are some of them, they are not so much outdoor uh, people uh, and they are sharing with us um, uh, their uh, doubts or fears about taking the whole group outdoors. but. Um, as we are already after taking, I think four groups uh, for the for this trip in the snow for the whole day uh, outdoors, uh, and they really loved it, and it really empowers the community of the school. So um, I hope it's uh, we are just now the kind of piloting this this um, program, uh, but it's it's so far it's very inspiring and um, and very successful. Um, so do you have do you have any questions for now? Uh, do you want me to tell a little uh, because now I want to summary my approach and my findings and uh, have more uh, slides about that. But if, do you have more questions about any of the to uh, setups I mentioned so far? Should I make something clearer or more precise or less precise? Or never speak again about any of the topics? And can you say? Good. <laughs> okay. Can I? Can I? Ask? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While you were speaking, you said something about that uh, very often in the designs of the activities outdoor time is a very huge challenge. What mm -hmm. did you mean under that? That the mm -hmm. time is there. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, thanks for this question. Uh, so, uh, uh, why it's a challenge? Uh, if if you run the whole process outdoors, uh, it means that you have to count that in the fall, uh, your working hours finish at six in Poland when the when it's dark outside, and you cannot work further. You can sit around the fire and talk but you cannot do other exercises. I know that uh, for uh, if we include our group into pre preparing the meals, which is very important because time and food will also be one of the key things in, in, uh, in the outdoor process. Um, so, uh, pre preparation for of the lunch, it takes two hours on the, if you do it on, on the fire. Um, if you uh, enter with the group to the campsite, setting up the camp, it's uh, around two uh, hours, and it's two hours to pack uh, up the, the campsite. Um, so uh, in terms of thinking about how many activities you can fit into the schedule, uh, it means that the, it's, uh, the time is very tight, yes, because if you go through the schedule in the morning, okay, so we start uh, preparing uh, breakfast at eight, finish at nine. Uh, so we can have, do some activities from 10 to 12 because at 12, some people need to start preparing the meal. Yeah. So on one hand, you would say it's, uh, the, it's, it's challenging. But as I will uh, mention in a second, or maybe, uh, but on the other hand, um, it's not... Uh, it's enriching the process. 
in my opinion. Uh, that it's, um, if you include people in the whole process and they are preparing the meal, uh, it's part of the method. It's not that we are wasting time on it. Yeah, uh, for many different reasons and for the different age groups for different reasons. But uh, you are getting uh, new skills, uh, how you can prepare the meal. Yeah, and I, we have, for example, this, uh, I have this example of uh, three teenagers, like 16 year olds that came with us for those uh, four day um, expeditions. And at the beginning, they were really um, passive. They were actually not doing much. And uh, uh of course, they didn't also know how to prepare the meal. Uh, so the first day, they were, they were the first day they were passive. They were fed by somebody. Yeah? The next day, they learned how to do the fire, how to make the fire, uh, and we teach them very practical skills. And they have to put their force and their um, use their body to uh, chuck the wood, chop the wood, to start the fire, yeah, to prepare it. On the third day, uh, they uh, get up in the morning even though the rhythm is to get up late. And they were like, okay, so today we are preparing the scrambled eggs for everybody. So let's start with chopping the wood. They already knew, they learned how to do the uh, the food by the fire. They learned how to do the fire and they even learned how to do the uh, wood for the fire, yeah? <laughs> so, um, so they actually learned a lot from it. And it actually gave them even more motivation to start doing things. So they came from the, very passive um, uh, position to very active position, yeah, through this engagement in the in the process. Is it clear now? Okay. Good. More questions? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Look at the time. <laughs> Um, I all have right. a question. Uh, so the question is, uh, are you always in one campsite or have you also uh, done outdoor education through hiking or movement? And maybe the second question, which is somewhat connected, is that uh, how, how do you approach, let's say, mobile phones or any other connection things to you make rules where uh, no, let's say, external connection is allowed or how do you approach this? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, so answering the first question, yes, I tried uh, different setups because for the, um, for the wilderness method, we did the hiking, the trekking in the mountains. So it was changing every day the location. Uh, with phone project, it was ba uh, based in one location, but it was not the island. It was we had um, in another part of Varmia. We had uh, we've picked, I think, like around five locations uh, to where we could perform our camp in the woods. Um, they were spread across, I don't know, let's say twenty kilometers, fifteen kilometers. Uh, so, as a, and as a trainer, when we are taking the group, we are choosing where we want to start. And as I mentioned, we, we could change the location once usually, that was the design. So we would move from uh, with one changing the location, yeah? And then hiking from one place to another. Uh, and uh, so it's actually the first time this work cooperation now with the island, it's the first time that our, we have one uh, one camping spot before it was moving. Um, and your second question uh, about the mobile, mobile phones. Uh, so uh, on each of the uh, of the setups, we have different rules uh, concerning the phones. Uh, my phone is calling. Just drop it. Um, it's my actually another uh, trainer from the outdoors calling. Uh, so uh, with the uh, with the needs group with the phone, we were actually saying this is a strict rule. You have to give away your phone. We were closing the phone in our special suitcase uh, that was with us, but the phone was really um, turned off and unav unavailable for the participants. And we were flexible this way that if somebody said, okay, but I need to use the phone once a day uh, because I have a, a very uh, jealous boyfriend and I need to send him a message once a day. Or uh, I... Uh, uh, on Friday, I have the, I don't know, work appointment and I have to call 
on Friday at noon. Okay, yeah, so we were giving some of, of we were we were flexible, but kind of um, on the side that you don't have the phone, but if you need it, okay, we can have it available at certain times, yeah. Um, and with the wilderness and trekking in the mountains, it was, uh, we were uh, more, it was a group, we left it to the group process. So we were saying that we encourage people not to use the phones, uh, mountains help with it because the network there is really bad. So actually it was only a few moments when they could have the network. Uh, and it, it worked very well because when we discarded people and some were really happy to drop their phones. So then they were pushing the rest of the group to drop their phones. And, uh, and actually most of the people were um, kind of disappointed from those who didn't uh, drop the phones and when they were looking, searching for the network. Uh, and we could all experience it, yes, that we were together as a group and then at one, I don't know, mountain, you could have the source. So those who were the phones that were starting to talk and they were gone from our group, from the presence that we experienced before. So it was also uh, like, bo I think both ways uh, work uh, worked well in the groups I worked with. Yeah, so kind of a strict rule with some flexibility and leaving it to the group process, but not encouraging. Uh, with the groups we are taking now for different design, we, for example, we say that we uh, don't pick up the phones by the, in the common area. It's not, uh, if somebody wants to give us the phone to the, our suitcase, it's fine. If you want to have it, because we have the more adults now, so it's difficult to force them to leave the phones, but okay, but turn off your, the voice of your phone and don't use it in the public space. Uh, and that's kind of enough um, to create this this the safe space of the, um, the phone screens. All right. So, uh, so some more pictures from our groups. So this is, as you can see, we are building up. This is uh, this construction. It's the uh, stove to for the bread. Uh, uh, for baking the bread, and it was designed and prepared all by the hands of the per, uh, participants. Some of them turned into volunteers because a lot of them come back to help us further on with the with the projects. And now we are baking the bread in it, so it was a really huge success for the whole group. And we have a few more constructions like that. Here we are designing the the water filter food that is most important and on the right hand side you see this and another of our constructions it's a sweat lodge uh again designed and, and done by our participants uh, and this is um uh there's i thought it will be a short presentation but it's always like that so there are not too many different topics i want to cover so i will ask you for more questions in a second and but just to show you how we can how we include the needs of the group into the process so if you see the the girl on the right hand side that is smiling very widely uh she's sitting here with her mother and she was really uh, really afraid to get dirty and she was uh, very uh, she's like I think 11 or 12, a young teenager, uh, very uh, having very good contact with adults and engaged in the process. And it turned out that it's for her. It's this is her boundary. She cannot get dirty. And she was sitting next to the to this mud uh, that we were we are uh, working. It's a clay that we are working together on to cover the, the sweat lodge. Uh, and she was like thinking with her mother uh, whether she should get dirty or not. And her mother was like didn't know what to tell her even. Uh, and she needed just a small push, uh, small like encouragement. And you can see how happy she is now. Um, and she was taking, uh, she asked us, uh, asked us to take pictures for her father to see that she got so uh, dirty because he could never believe that she got so dirty. Um, so she, you know, and uh, in this very natural setup, uh, she could overcome one of her big uh, topics her yet yeah, to uh, to be accurate and the way she looks All right um i thought about um giving you a very brief summary of uh, what it gives uh, to uh, what those setup what this outdoor setup in my opinion gives uh, to each of the to contribute to each of the groups but as we um, 
it's almost an hour or, uh, already. Uh, okay, so let's start from the from the end here. Uh, so I mentioned to you today the adults, families, younger youth, and needs. Um, and uh, starting with the adults, what I think this setup of the outdoor process um, gives them. Uh, it's maybe not a big guess, but um, it really helps to contradict the um, to contradict uh, the alienation after COVID and after lockdown. Um, and um, if you are um, in out in nature, uh, you don't. Uh, when we worked with those communities here, the rural communities, we really didn't ask if somebody is. Um, uh, is jobless or if it's a director uh, and we really had um, uh, alcoholic um, str alcoholic struggling with his addiction uh, working as the uh, night guard sitting together by the fire with the head of the department in the our local government and they were spending four days together and this director of the of the head the head of the department uh, afterwards he said that one of the biggest thing, uh, things for him was to gain the hope and the trust in other people and the cooperation with other people uh, and he, why he gained it he gained it through sitting by the fire together with this uh, uh, this uh, night guard. Yes, he would not, usually not meet this person. We are already isolated and alienated in different uh, social groups. And if you take people outdoors to a different conditions than they are usually used to, uh, it's uh, it helps them to step out and to gain this hope. Also because of the um, of the process itself that uh, helps the cooperation. Um, so this is the big thing, and uh, as what the the situation that we are going through right now, um, uh, the economical uh, the situation difficulties that um, people go through, uh, and uh, how much they are um, carrying, how many problems they are carrying, uh, family wise, work wise, money wise. Um, being outdoors in another place, it's a really big, deep reset for them. Yeah, coming back, uh, people very often say that they don't know anymore how to rest properly right now. That it's the first time in years that they could stop and think about something or, uh, or that they could stop and just rest after three days of this uh, as I mentioned, this uh, the time how it's tight. Um, yes, that it's um, after two or three days of being engaged in the most very simple activities of preparing the meal, chopping the wood, making the fire, building something, going to the walk, doing nothing because at the moment you have to wait for something. They were just finally uh, able to to actually rest. From this, you know, the the run that they are ex experiencing, overwhelming uh, amounts of messages, uh, and I think uh, the question about the mobile phones and the screens for me, it's uh, it's obvious, <laughs> my personal opinion, but it's obvious that it also reducing of the screens, and they often are very happy to give away their phones because they are actually the screens, phones, the connection to the uh, to all the information to their work, to the um, expectations of the families, of parents, uh, it's overwhelming. Um, so cutting out all this uh, helps them to, to actually go back to the ability to rest. And so that's, that's for the adults. Um, for the adults and for the families. So now it's about this, uh, about the mixed group and why the mixed group is very much uh, um, uh, why it's so enriching. So uh, if you sit by the fire and you are in the forest and you are making things out of clay, of course, very easily the metaphor of a tribe of our ancestors sitting by the fire in the, in the caves comes up. 
uh, uh, not a big surprise, but uh, but a very good one actually. This the, the, this comparison because it's really enriching to kind to form this tribe. So um, giving this free space for the um, for the group to gather, and it's not okay. So now it's families with little children. Oh no, it's families with teenagers. Now it's the uh, let's say a trip for the um, parents of the. Um, children struggling with autism for you to have your um, rest. Or now it's for the seniors, uh, for the elder women who are want, who want to go back on the labor market. So when we don't um, group people in those kind of silos, uh, and each of them comes because each of the uh, of the problems or of the situations I mentioned, it's actually our people, who, the, the participants of our um, activities who gathered together, and they actually can exchange because if one person has problems with the communication with a teenager, Sam, maybe there is a grandmother who already raised her children and they, she can, uh, she is now alone struggling with coming back to the labor market, but she's great with talking about the uh, raising up children. Back, or she will just offer her time and uh, heart to take care of children of three and four that, uh, that are accompanied by their father. And the father can just rest and um, connect with other adults. And she's just so happy to be a grandmother for those uh, four days. So the, um, this spontaneous exchange, is uh, it's a really powerful thing and it helps to design this process um, as I mentioned that we designed it to answer the needs of the group that is actually gathered yeah without um without uh, naming straight away people's problems uh, groups they are coming from uh, and it actually what 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 I mentioned before it, that our participants were saying that it's really gay um, they get they regained the hope in the group they regain the hope in the society. It's maybe it sounds like a big words, but those are the words that we heard from the participants. Uh, and for the um, families, it's uh, it was uh, being outdoors when your children are in the wider group of people, not only other parents who are occupied with their children, but actually with other adults who maybe they don't have their children and they have more space and attention. Um, it's a great place for the workers like us if we have the uh, if we want to work on the parental skills because it's a great place to talk about the boundaries of your children how they communicate the needs and that you don't need to guess but you need to ask and look and give them space it's a great place to work with uh, parents um about um giving space for your children and um encouraging to um the English word um, to support the independence of children, not only teenagers, but even five-year-olds, six-year-olds, to uh, because what we observe recently, uh, um, it's a lot of uh, parents who actually uh, the helicopter parents that actually uh, are trying to protect children from all the negative uh, experiences, and here they. Um, the children are just excited to, to learn new activities and to do things by their own hands. Uh, and they are out there and communicating with adults. Uh, and it's a great moment to support parents and train with them the parental skills. Mm. For the needs, uh, I mentioned that a little bit, uh, but um, really uh, finding them Selves and uh, what I observed for those groups that I worked with, um, that finding themselves a new setup with the group, uh, it really gave them uh, the seven days experience, gave them a huge um, load of experiences that they late, later on, uh, you, we, I could work on as a coach uh, during the group process and the individual coaching uh, for them to look at their life, uh, um, what uh, one of the important things I, I think for each, for all the groups that are coming to outdoors, but for me especially, and maybe for youth is also 
important, is that uh, this focus on really practical things and on uh, kind of real things. Uh, we uh, There is no question if we want to chop the wood, if the wood is for us to get warm uh, in the evening. Uh, and it turns out that then, uh, so it really um, uh, helps them to build up the inner motivation that later on you can use to uh, for them to um, start to change their life. Yes, not only in the forest. So uh, for the, so it's the same with chopping the wood and having the uh, the warmth. Yes, it's about uh, preparing the food and how much actually effort it takes. Uh, but how great it tastes afterwards and that nobody can does it for you. Uh, it's not it's not your parents who say, oh, you have to do it because I don't want to do it for you. It's the real need, yes, because uh, because nobody does it for you. Nobody else will do it instead of you because other parts of your team are doing something else in the same time, picking up the wood yeah, or chopping or preparing, uh, setting up the tents. If, if it's not you, nobody will do the, um, the, the meal, for example. Mm, what else is there for achievement? Uh, okay. All right, uh, questions about the groups? The other question. I like questions. <laughs> okay. But after the next slide, I really you will need a question. So uh so in somebody needs to prepare one. because <laughs> uh, I don't want I don't know, you know, what the kind of uh, le meta level is uh, is clear or uh, would be valuable for you for uh, for my sharing. Okay, so um, uh, I thought about also sharing with you um, how I see the role of the nature. So here is our uh, one of our willow trees from this picture um, from our Varmia um, countryside. Um, it's a real picture and it's really beautiful nature. So what's the what's the um, role of the nature in this whole process? That uh, how I see it, and I uh, put it into four different spectrums of the uh, of the role of the nature how I see it, uh, where to start it with. Okay, so let's start with the physical significance. So um, you are all involved in one way or another with the outdoors. So you, so we all know that, but it's maybe, maybe not. So um, from physical conditions, it's good for, uh, for humans to stay outdoors and to be outdoors. So um, when you come said that you like the holistic method. So for me, working outdoors, it's this kind of holistic method. Because if we want to work with the burnout, if we want to work with um, parental skills, or if we want to work with the children development, let's do it in the setup uh, that uh, that helps us to bring to the group what we want for the group. Yes. So um, if we want to teach people how to rest, let's take them into the forest. Yes, where where uh, we can self-regulate better, where our stress hormone goes down. Yes, where we have the uh, sounds that are actually healing for our body instead of being. Um, working on how to uh, relax in the next to the some crowded street um so so the nature it's this setup that actually what i want to give to the group it's uh, it it strengthens the um, the influence i want to make yeah and um it's the same uh, as I mentioned about this uh, building up the inner motivation of the groups. Yes, uh, being outdoors, I can see how in four days the teenagers are changing their behavior. Uh, 
and it's I don't have to um, do anything about it. I just wait until they see it's important to chop the wood. Uh, of course, I do do things, yes, but it, it helps to, to, to lead my process. Uh, if I was doing the same training with those teenagers inside, uh, inside, indoors, I would have to think about some very, uh, you know, sophisticated uh, teamwork, uh, building exercises, uh, so they can get motivated to actually work for the rest of the team. Um, uh, then, uh, profound bond. Uh, I do think that uh, as the humankind, we come from the nature, from the woods, from the caves. Uh, and uh, so if you take people to, to this setup, um, if you get them by the fire, they will start talking about important uh, topics for them. Uh, so it's, it's again, the, the nature helps to build up the process and lead the process that I want to give to the, um, to the groups. Um, uh, so being out in nature, it's um, spontaneously uh, working on metaphors, which I mentioned for the wilderness therapy. It starts spontaneously. I don't need to uh, introduce it to groups. They themselves refer how they feel inside to the conditions they see outside to the tree that that's there on the um, on the meadow uh, to the sun that was to the way sun was rising in the morning. Uh, some people connected to their spirituality, uh, and this way they, the, the work goes deeper. Um, so, um, so I do believe that we have this kind of profound bond that connects us to nature, and we can use it in, in the work, yes, but it's, it comes naturally for us to express ourselves. Ah, I wanted to mention the, the same with the, the same thing with the. And natural art, yes. Uh, we have uh, on the island from this year, we gathered small, uh, ga we have sm small art gallery and it starts completely uh, spontaneously because if you are outdoors, doesn't matter if you are a child or an adult, in, uh, in each group, we have people who uh, discover artists in themselves and they are expressing themselves in this way, yeah? Just because something inspires them around. So again, Mm. So I think this this work goes deeper, yeah, than if you again think about some um, artistic activities indoors. Mm. And uh, why is it good for groups? Now, how it supports the the the, the, the group process. Um, so again, after if we if I take a group. To the forest that haven't uh, met each other before. They are meeting, we are living from, we are usually meeting in the civilization, sitting somewhere around the, uh, around the table uh, in the morning. In the evening, they cannot believe that they, that it's less than 24 hours uh, after they met uh, because they, during those 12 hours of the first day, or even six hours of the first day, they set up together the tents. They had to come up with the idea how to build up uh, their um, the toilet, the camping toilet. They had to come, so they started to talk about uh, pooping already together after two hours of after meeting. Uh, they uh, had to prepare the meal together, uh, and most of them never prepared the the meal on this uh, on the fire. So actually, they had to come up, come out of their comfort zone, and they had to show that they don't know something to the rest of the group. Um, so again, uh, the design, uh, the design that nature gives us, it it helps the group process, the integration. Uh, there is a there is time for the group activities. There is time for the one on one um, talk, yeah, because they, we are going to get something, and I'm just with one person, so it's it, how the integration moves uh, moves on. Mm. Um, what else is uh, just not to uh, there? The, the group is facing the challenges. In terms of the weather condition, uh, in terms of um, let's say one of our groups, we were uh, we usually take we have a um, 
kart, kart, jaki jest um, przyczepka? Pomóż. Maybe trailer? A trailer, maybe, yes, could be trailer. Okay, so we have the trailer with all our equipment. Okay, and every now and then, when the, we have a bigger mud, we cannot get into the island because it's stuck somewhere. Or just uh, we have to push it up the hill. So we have the challenge, group challenges that is created by, again, by the conditions. Um, we have to talk about our needs, our boundaries, uh, because we have to uh, uh, discuss how we, uh, how people sleep in the evening and who gets cold, who uh, who's getting cold at night or not, if you need an extra sleeping bag. Uh, we have to communicate, um, and that builds up the trust very fast. Yes, so that's that's how nature helps the, for the group process, and for the individual. Um, we mentioned the the just the physical uh, environment, yes, uh, but also um, it's uh, if we have no screens, so no phones, uh, because it is a rule in all the groups as I mentioned, one, one way or another, it helps to um, helps to go back to your rhythm. Yeah, it helps with getting the inner motivation. Um, there is, uh, all, in the nature, there's always time for you to be by yourself, which for lots of people, it's, that's, that's the big challenge. But it actually being outside, it just uh, helps out because um, I woke up earlier than other people. I don't have my phone with me. I cannot uh, sit around and read the book because it's either too dark or too bright. So it encourages the individual process as well, not only the group process, but also the individual process of the, um, of well, kind of healing, whatever it is, yes, gaining strength, reset, or, um, or whatever reasons people come to, to the, I mean, um, plus um, all the um, uh, being outdoors gives a great balance for people for their attention out. So even if you work with the group on a certain topic, um, you have to have the balance of your attention. Not only now we are a lot in our minds. I mean, generally in our civilization, yes, talking on a very meta level. Here you have to go down and uh, you have to include the practical things. You have to include in the day the physical exercise, which is not uh, you know, running or going to the gym, but again, chopping the wood, carrying something, um, carrying the water from the, from the lake, uh, uh, walking the distance to pick up um, wood for the fire and stuff like that. So it's naturally... It helps us to go back to the rhythm that is uh, again healthy for us, yes, and and can balance the um, the topics we have uh, for the group. Uh, hmm. yeah, I'm looking at my notes. If I have anything else to be added, uh, I have some more screens, but I think I said a lot, uh, and uh, I would like to know what are your questions or you have your insight, your experiences, or maybe you want me to sh to uh, tell more about one of the things I mentioned so far. I have a question mm -hmm. about the challenge of the nature. There are mm -hmm. definitely moments when it's for some people too wet or uh, there is a thunderstorm later. Uh, how do you manage with this? Uh, is it a learning process then or it's too much, you know, of panic and uh, learning cannot happen? Uh, how are the mm -hmm. groups uh, and you mm -hmm. and uh, somebody mm -hmm. behind it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great question. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I had a screen of my favorite, uh, my I called it favorites uh, uh, slide for you, but I will not share it anymore anymore because it was too much talking anyway. Uh, but the first thing on my on my favorites was that I am a planner, as I mentioned before, and I like to have plan A and B. And uh, so the 
working out those really teaches you uh, the teaches me at least flexibility and going with uh, and reactions to the situation that uh, that occur occurs. Uh, so what happened to me? I think once that we had to evacuate because of the strong uh, winds from the woods with the group. Um, and of course, sometimes uh, you have uh, somebody for him for whom it was too cold. Um, uh, and it's a great learning process anyway. And uh, if you... Uh, you need extra trainers, that's for sure. You need to remember to ensure that you have enough of the staff uh, for the outdoors. But if you have, uh, if you make sure that you have enough staff and you know what is your evacuation route, whatever it is, yes, uh, depends uh, on the conditions where you create your uh, training. It can be, uh, it's it's usually still uh, a good learning experience. The evacuation we did with the group, it was really the situation that the whole group went to bed. We They all went to the, um, to the tent. Uh, and, and then the strong winds really started. It was windy before, but it really started to bend the trees. So actually everybody was already in their pajamas uh, in the sleeping bags. It was almost midnight and we decided to evacuate uh, to a safer spot. Uh, um, so we had to, uh, you know, decide which uh, uh, which uh, equipment to take, uh, how to uh, how to leave this uh, our camping site because we were not taking everything, of course, uh, with us. What do we need there? And uh, because of the of, as trainers, we were not panicked, uh, and the, the the group really used it well. Uh, we we evaluated in the morning the situation, uh, the role of every person in it. Uh, uh, to to have the learnings, uh, and uh, and it was a it was a very good experience for for the group for individuals for the group process as well as they, uh, of course it was a successful one yes there was not a um, we did it in advance not waiting for the um, for difficult situation to come. Um, and from the individual perspective, when it's too cold, too dark, too wet, um, if we are, uh, I wonder if I had a situation uh, when it was really overwhelming for a participant. I don't, we, I didn't, never faced situation like that. Every time it was a situation that we could answer with the trainers. And it's, again, uh, if I work with youth, with needs, it's a great, great opportunity to talk about your boundaries about your needs how to express them how to precisely communicate them how to how to be responsible for taking care of my own needs um yeah so so it's again a very very good learning process uh, maybe what i uh, what the challenges are uh, what happened to um, not to my group but i know that happened to my to my colleagues uh, that sometime in few groups it happened that if somebody had some uh, psychiatric uh, psychiatric problems, uh, sometimes they were not even recent, but from a previous uh, some from the past. Uh, if you put people in the new conditions, they don't always know what will come up. And this is the the it's good to know about the group you are taking about this background. Uh, but again, how you can uh, prepare yourself is to, through thinking about the evacuation ro uh, route. Who is your kind of on the ground support? Yes, we always have somebody who is on the phone just in case we know who has an extra car uh, from somebody from the organization, even if it's not included in the pro project. We always have a backup. Like, a few more things I wanted to mention that from the like organizational part of outdoor work, if, uh, in every project that I was performing, we always included the equipment in the project um, uh, because that's a big um, uh, that's a big hassle for people to uh, to join in the project if they need to provide their own equipment. So we were always providing it uh, from our side. Uh, or um, providing what people are missing from the from the outdoors equipment, then you can reach to the groups that uh, that really need it. No screens. There was a question. Um, I said about uh, that you need more tra trainers and longer time, less activities, but you gain time. 
If you waste time, you gain time. Uh, and uh, one of the, the things um, our participants every time actually mention is the how much time they can actually relate to each other. This wonderful time when the after sunset that you cannot do any more activities and you just sit by the fire and talk with each other. Um, and that's, uh, I think it's it's precious. It's, it's something that's really um if, if you slow down after three days being in the forest, if you slow down, uh, you can go to the to the nat natural rhythm, and uh, that's when the the real work starts. Um, for me, with the groups. <laughs>